lot of times we as people, a lot of times we as people live our lives by something called conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom is where you get it from your grandmama, your granddaddy, your uncle, your niece, your friends in the bathroom at school, or you just take it to be true because everybody doing it. The Bible is a book that says the truth will set you free. When you believe conventional wisdom, you just take what the TV says. You take what the rapper says. You take what society says. And, and so when you take that, you, 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 you take it as truth. But being there ain't no truth in it, it won't set you free. You just still ignorant. Uh, I'm gonna give you one before I go to the Bible. Back when President Obama was president, uh, him and Kamala Harris get blamed for LBGQT. If you don't, don't know what LBGQT is, ask me, I'll tell you. But, but if you understand anything, we live in a democracy. President Obama couldn't even get a, a, a judge into the Supreme Court because the Republicans mm -hmm. was in rule. Mm -hmm. So that means that Obama by himself couldn't have passed LBGQT because the Republicans had Congress and Senate. Mm -hmm. And in order for Obama to get anything passed, Congress and Senate has to go in to get it passed. Mm -hmm. So that means Obama didn't do it by sin. But yet still you hear people say, this is what he did. Mm -hmm. They won't tell you the truth and then we believe that because we hear it on TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's conventional wisdom. Mm -hmm. Something somebody tell you that you don't bother to go to the links to get right. the truth about. You just take it when it comes past your ears and go tell somebody you know Obama. See, that's conventional wisdom. It can't set nobody free. Mm -hmm. So what I've been attempting to do for 16 years is set this church on the truth because the truth is the power. Amen. Yeah. Uh, and see, see, the truth of God's word produces power. Yeah. And you can't see be set free on the gospel according to the Baptist or the Pentecostal or the Seventh-day Adventist. You can't be set free according to what you think. That's, that's right. right. That's right. Because there ain't no power in what you think. No. Amen. No, ain't no power in what you think. Power is in what God said. Amen. Amen. So if you don't have the right gospel, you ain't gonna be empowered. Mm -hmm. So you go to church and the praise leader tell you, oh, come on. Mm -hmm. Let's give him some praise. Mm -hmm. If you ain't bring a praise from the house in your heart, you ain't got no praise. Yes, you ain't got nothing but a flesh movement. It said in spirit and in truth. But we take this conventional wisdom and we run with it. And we don't even know what God is saying. So I'm going to start in 1 Corinthians and tell you what the word says. First thing I'm going to get is give you the commission. It says Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. Let me say that one more time. Mm -hmm. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. Mm -hmm. This is Paul's commission. Right. That's Paul's commission. Paul is commissioned mm -hmm. to give us what I'm finna give you. So it ain't, I'm just a, I'm just an intercessor that's reading from you what God commissioned Paul to pour into you. Now if you will let it go into you, you will have what God says you will have because he don't lie. Amen. So let's get back to it. When you look at the scripture in 117, Lord, I pray that you open up their spiritual ears that they may be able to hear what they the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Listen to what Paul said in 117. He said, for Christ sent me not to baptize, ain't that a statement? 
Amen. Ain't that a statement? That, that, that's that's going to miss. That's going to miss the Bible scholar up. <laughs> uh, uh, I want to be baptized. If that's going to mess them up, that's gotten messed up already. Right. Paul said, but my commission <laughs> was not about baptism. <laughs> no, that ain't my commission. Right. Paul said, that's not what I've been apostolically called for. Right. I'm not an apostle to talk about baptism. I've been sent for a specific cause. I got a heavenly calling with a commission. Then he goes on to say, <clears throat> not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made not in faith. Listen to what he said. Listen to what he said. For the preaching of the cross mm -hmm. is to them that perish foolish. Come on. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. What he said? He said the preaching of the cross. So who's the cross about? Right. Jesus. Yes. So the cross is about Jesus, and he says that the preaching of the cross mm -hmm. is the power. Come on. Turn with me. Romans 1 16. Let me show you something. In Romans 1 16, you get what he said. Why I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes, to the Jew first and to the also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Yes, they double down on it. So it's saying the gospel that Paul is commissioned to preach. The gospel that Paul is given to give is power for salvation. What if you been being empowered to have church because you've been studying the book of Esther? Where your power coming from? What if you've been empowered by religion and there ain't no power till you get to the cross. Where you get your power from? So according to Paul, Paul is saying that the commission in the message that I've been given to give to you is the power you got to have for the church. Amen. Now if I'm wrong, you, 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 you need to talk to me now. <laughs> But conventional wisdom will tell the pastor that he can let the Baptist Association tell him what to preach. He can let the Seventh-day Adventists tell him what he got to preach. He can let himself tell him what they, he got to preach. And he can preach it from his own belly. Mm. That's all it is. But, 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 but it's not the power right. That's right. unto salvation. Right. See, because when we look at Israel, Israel didn't have Jesus on the cross. Nope. When we look at Noah, Noah didn't have Jesus on the cross. Nope. There was only one in the Old Testament that was in covenant with righteousness. That was Abraham because Abraham believed. And we just read in Romans 1, 16, he said, because you believe. But what do you believe in? Are you peculiar about what you believe in? And is there any, any power and what you are believing. Come on. See, because just like Paul, it, it, it says in, in the first Corinthians 1 and in Romans 1, Paul was called. Come on. Can somebody tell me what uh, Hebrews 3 1 says? You got 
got to have so wait a minute, Paul was called, so that means he was commissioned. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 3 once just said you got a heavenly oh. calling. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, conventional wisdom messed the young people up when Snoop Dogg them, not Snoop Dogg, but when Tupac them went into the movies and started doing drive-bys on the movie and they were getting paid because everybody was loving to see the drama. Mm -hmm. And they were getting up going home making millions. That conventional wisdom taught the young people and messed them up. Everybody got a little gun, started getting in the car riding, doing drive-by. Yes. Not knowing that two part of them got paid and went to the bank. Mm -hmm. They were going to prison yeah. or to death warrant. So society has taught young people conventional wisdom, do what I do, and they'll come on the TV and tell you that blah, 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 and everybody believes it. Nobody bothers to get truth because it takes right. a little time to right. dig truth. Truth will, you just go by the first thing you hear. Yeah. And so therefore, what happens is we can't have time to get into the power of the cross to get the right gospel because we ain't got time to study to show ourselves approved. I'm saved and going to heaven anyway because I go to a building. Somebody has told you something. Somebody has told you to go to church and be a Christian requires you be this and you got to do that. That's conventional wisdom. Right. All God requires of you is that if he has heavenly called you, he has placed something in you that you need to give back to him. Right. I ain't talking about the life. 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 What he has given you that you need to give back to him is 1 Corinthians 12, where he has sent the Holy Spirit to move inside of you. See, because until after the good news of the cross, him crucified and resurrected, you didn't have the Holy Spirit. Nobody had the Holy Spirit before he was went to that cross. See, but after that Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is what makes you new creation. The Holy Spirit is what make you new creation because here's simply what it is. See, you ain't got no business making up your mind talking about what you gonna do if the Holy Spirit ain't led you to do nothing. Amen. You probably got conventional wisdom, so you say I'm done, but you ain't got nothing to do nothing with it unless God allows the Holy Spirit to prepare you to do it. And if the Holy Spirit ain't spoke, you ought to stand down. We are part of everything that moves because we think it's right. Conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom. Why? Okay, let me go to the Bible. There was as many as 120 disciples with Jesus Christ. Jesus got to telling them what they was going to suffer to be able to go with him. And some of them said, no, that's too tough for me. I'm going back. One of them came up to Jesus and said, they turning around. They going back. He said, let them go. If they was with us, They'd have never left. Right. Amen. What was he saying? Spiritually, I walk in the spirit. Mm -hmm. If you don't walk in the spirit, you ain't got no problem with me. Yep, yep. Come on. See, because they were two kind of people. Can I talk come to somebody? On, they were two kind of people in yes, the world. Sir. The ones that's perishing yes. are the ones that say. Yes, they were two kind of people. Yes, you can put it in between in there you want to, but it ain't but two kind of people. Yes, sir. That's the one that's perishing, yes, and that's the one that's saved. Yes, and if you say you ain't saved on your own, you got that blood of Jesus on you. That's why his gospel is the power. So all this other conventional wisdom, Ain't hit no nothing. What you believe ain't hit no nothing. Why? 
The question you should ask somebody that might be learning in the Bible is, Pastor, why you do what you do? Because if I follow myself, I become a castaway. I follow him. And we don't know how to follow him because we ain't been on the right doctrine. Because he said the gospel of Christ. Now let me, can I, can I, can I just break it down to you? Okay, we're going to walk through the Bible. When we came in the Garden of Eden, there was Adam and Eve. When we came through Noah, there was Noah in the ark and his family. When we came through Moses, there was Moses, Aaron, and the Israelites. When we came to the kingdom, after we went through David's period, when we got to the kingdom, John the Baptist said, repent, be baptized. There's a kingdom at hand. Is that what he said? He said, repent, be baptized. There's a kingdom at hand. Okay, all you got to do is tell me and I'll shut up and sit down. Tell me when Jesus was crowned king. When was he crowned king? So how can there be a kingdom if there's not a king? Why wasn't he crowned king? Because they said he was just a carpenter's son, so they killed him. So tell me, what else is existing after the kingdom? What did God do after the kingdom? God made another move because the Bible didn't end in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The Bible went on, and who did God commission to take it on? So Paul is separating, according to Romans 1, with a gospel call with a subject of Jesus Christ. So if he's talking about Jesus Christ, he's the only one that verbatim can explain Jesus crucified and resurrected. Amen. He's the only one. He's the only one. He's the only one. He find another. Give it to me. Give me a scripture. That there's somebody else that can explain to you the power of Jesus being crucified and resurrected and what he did for the person that would believe in him. He said, where are you going here, Pastor? Because I'm going here because this convention of wisdom has killed the yes, people sir. from that pulpit, right? Yes, it has killed the people's power because they believe that they just pick up the Bible and I'm going to read the whole Bible. But you ain't getting no power yeah. for what God has commissioned you to do. That's right. What did God commission you to do? What about Ephesians 16? What about Ephesians 16? Give it to me. Let me see what it said. What about Ephesians 16? What did it say? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's right. what it said? Let me back up. First Corinthians. 1, 17 says, to be strong in the Lord, you got to have the power of the right gospel. Yes, right. Huh? Right. Is that right? Yes, That's right? Yes, Keep it straight. Is that right? That's right? So if you ain't got the power of the right gospel, how you going to be strong in the Lord when God has commissioned a man called Paul to come give you the right gospel where the power of salvation exists? So you are supposed to simply be a portal that Paul, when that word come from God, is commissioned to tell you where the power lies at. That what is set to free. That's what is set to free. That's what is set to free. You ain't got no power because I'm going to read the whole Bible. God forbid. Let your pastor come tell you something conventional wisdom ain't gave you, and you will beat him up and run him out. To the young people in here, I would say this. You might be, God's calling is so powerful, you might be feeling a yearn of the call, but it ain't your time yet. What you are doing is getting a foundation set up under you of truth, so that when he do call you to tell you now, you will have a sure foundation. You won't be set on that foundation of conventional wisdom where grandmama said this, pastor said that, but you'll be set on the power of the cross. Huh? So, you young people are in here because you're future. You might not be in this church, but you're future. 
Because see, America is falling apart. Can I go on and just preach it? Can I just go on and preach it? America is falling apart because America don't understand his sin. And they don't understand that God already saw America falling apart and God already fixed the way for those that would believe to have power to be saved. And never will a righteous man be forsaken or begging bread. Right. So you say, what are you saying, preacher? The Bible said perilous times were going to come is here. Yes, sir. And that perilous time came because instead of us smartening up the next generation like I'm trying to do now, we dumbed them down. Right. Let me tell you how we dumbed them down. Anybody here know anything about the back of field? Ain't nobody remember. Blueberry, pickle, cucumber. Anybody don't remember? Ain't many young people know nothing about it. Let me tell you why we had to work in that back of field. Because we didn't have nothing. If we had one pair of shoes with a hole in them, we were doing good. We went in that back of field and we earned enough to eat. If we want nothing but some biscuits and syrup, we earned enough to buy school clothes. We picked them cucumbers, yeah. but then we stood up and we said, I don't want my child doing what I had to do. Yeah. But the real deal is, what you didn't understand is, is through wisdom of having to go through to have, yeah. we felt a responsibility to protect what we had yeah. so we didn't go out and spend it on every fad, right. fashion or style that came along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We took care of it. Let me tell you what happened. Let me, 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 let me roll, let me roll. Black people are a trillion dollar business a year. But they are the only race of people that don't keep nothing. They spend everything they make. Come on. You know why? Because they was taught. Not to know what it was like to earn it. Earn it. So when you give it to them, they don't know what labor is. That's right. So they freely give it. Yeah. Freely give it away. So we hurt. Sixteenth in the world as far as earning money. And don't do nothing but earn it to give it away. Next store, let me get to the next store. Let me get past my picture so I can go to the next car dealer. Let me get to that. And you say, well, preacher, that ain't got nothing to do with it. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You want me to tell you why? The Bible said, raise up in a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he will not be far. We were supposed to teach our children Christ crucified and resurrected. We were supposed to teach our children that you earn the fruit of your labor and that you take the fruit of your labor and not only put a little bit up for yourself, but you put some up for your child so that your child would understand that he's supposed to leave a legacy for his child. Amen. That's Bible. Is that Bible? It's Bible. So you say, well, what are you talking about, preacher? Here's what I'm talking about. The gospel of Jesus Christ ain't about what you do in the church. That's right. The gospel of Jesus Christ is about what God sent the Holy Spirit through Jesus crucified yes. and resurrected, placed in you, yes. and how you take what God invested in you yes, sir. and show it back to him. Yep. How am I showing it back to him? I ain't even got time to study. I don't even know nothing about the Gospels. So I'm going to be ashamed because I don't know how to rightly divide the Word. And because there's so much conventional, conventional wisdom coming from that pulpit, everybody that write a book, we on board. And the greatest love letter that's ever been written It's called that B-I-B-L-E. Oh, yeah. And what it says to you is not man-made, denominational made, not Republican, not Democrat. What it says to you is God love letter to you. And it was God that sent Jesus. And if you don't know how to use Jesus, then what you using for salvation? Wow. 
Well, Prince Pat can make that hard come. We young and we don't wanna, we don't wanna go through that. See, that's that's the foolishness of the thing. Right. Yeah. See, when you when you claim Jesus, you don't claim a righteousness of your own. No. Let me move, let me move. Let me, let me, let me stand right here. When you claim Jesus, it ain't what you do. He already done it. You just believe what he already done. And if you can't believe what he already done, you ain't got no power to even believe. So now let me get this straight. That crazy man standing up there said it ain't up to you to be righteous. It's up for you to have faith in righteousness. Lord Jesus. Oh. It ain't up for you to be righteous. You ain't got none of your own. No, it's no. up to you to claim what no, Jesus did. He was the only one that could do it. You're supposed to have faith in what Jesus did. That's why Paul was commissioned yeah. to tell you that him crucified and resurrected ain't about you. It's about you having faith in him. So you're a part of it. And here's the problem. If you'd have been understanding Paul, when Paul was talking to Timothy, Paul was telling Timothy, listen, Satan's going to try to close up the church mind. Not to believe the gospel of God. Well, what are they going to believe? Fables for me. You ever read Pearl this time? He said, men won't, won't, won't listen to sound doctrine no more. They were going to listen to the fable of men. Forever learning, never coming to an understanding. Forever reading that Bible, I'm going to read my Bible. What you read? You all back over there in the Old Testament. The Old Testament will not religion. I come to your house. I don't see no sheep, no dove, no goat. I don't see no pigeons. I don't see no nothing. But you all back over there in the Old Testament. For what? <laughs> your commission is not in the Old Testament. Lord Jesus, let me take you somewhere. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Go with me to Isaiah. Go with me to Isaiah 29. <laughs> now, because I got a trick Bible. Somebody read Isaiah 29. Because I got tricked by my own trick. And the vision of all is become unto you as the word of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. Oh, you can't read the book. Oh, because it's sealed. Oh, no wonder you all over the place. Because the book is sealed. I can't read it. Give me the next verse. I'm pretty moved. I'm pretty moved. I'm pretty moved. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. I am not learned. So how is a theologist doctor going to stand in the pulpit and open to you something that only Jesus can open to you? Amen. How can a man open that to you unless he take this to you and tell you what in the book you need right. so that you can understand? Give me Revelation 5. Four, five, and six. Revelation five, 
three, four, five, six. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the books, neither to look up their own. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and re to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah and the root of David have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. To loose the seven seals. So who was the only one found? No man? No, no man. So now let me get this straight. You mean to tell me your mind can't be open for that book unless Jesus? No wonder it said God gives the increase. I understand. I understand. So that, that, that give me one more scripture. That give me one more scripture. But I'm going to bring it all together. I'm going to bring it all together. That give me one more scripture because I, I understand now why I got to bring in Brother Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Give me Jeremiah 29 and 11. She be how there's a way. For well, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. There's a way that when God looks upon you from heaven, that you got to have a desire or an ambition towards what he has for you. Yes, sir. So it says in Jeremiah 29, 11 and 12, he said, there's a way that you got to look for me. He said, you just can't look for me because you go to a church building. That's right. right. You just can't look for me because you gave somebody five dollars at the stop sign because they were hungry. Mm -hmm. You just can't look for me because you bought a dove in the back door and put it in that basket. Mm -hmm. No, uh, you can't look for me because you singing a song. That's right. No, that ain't what he said. Jeremiah 29, 12. Give me the next one. And ye shall seek me and find me. And when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, said the Lord. And I will turn away the, your captivity. And I will gather from you from the na all nations and from all places where that I have driven you. So in other words, if Jesus is going to deal with me, he got to see a desire in me, yeah. in my heart. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Is that about? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah, so if Jesus is the only one can open your mind to what you reading right there. Mm -hmm. So that means the theology school can't make you a doctor. If you become a doctor, you're a doctor of foolishness. Let me go. The real deal is you go to all that schooling and man cannot open that. To you. She just read it in Revelation 5. So Paul and John the Revelator about the apocalypse is walking hand in hand because each of them has a subject of Jesus Christ. Well, you don't want to go in the book of Revelations because... Eh. Help me, little man, but I was about to, I was about to say a little something. How, how can you tell me I ain't got no business in Revelation when it's addressing the church? That's right. That's right. <laughs> now, go back to Ephesians 6, and it tells you that Satan's going to be throwing in so many words, blaming dogs. Right. Give me Revelation 6, too. Give me six one six two. Okay, I'll be. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, and it were the noise of the thunder. <laughs> one of the four beasts saying, "Come and see." And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, bow, and a crown was 
was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. The first seal that Jesus is opening the church mind to is that Satan is coming riding a horse that looked like he is in Revelation 19. Come on. Jesus said, my horse is white. Yeah. Satan horse is white. Right. But I'm not coming with a bow right. because I'm not firing yep. fiery darts. Right. Right. So that one that I'm going to open to your mind, the very first thing <laughs> that I need to tell you that what you are seeing is Satan shooting them arrows mm -hmm. of conventional wisdom. And you, and you believe in it. Mm -hmm. So you will go, oh, Pastor Jamal Brown, Pastor Joel Osteen, oh, I'm going to listen to them preacher going to church today. And when you get finished, you're still hungry, mm -hmm. your soul ain't replenished, because you ain't had no truth to set it free. Because they ain't taking you to that word right. no. like a commission pastor spoke to. Right, right. They taking you to conventional wisdom. And guess what the congregation said? Oh, preach! Pastor, preach! And ain't doing nothing but entertaining Same the next right. week they come back. Same way. Worse than it was because yeah. they ain't got no truth. To set them free. That's right. Let me explain something to you. Anybody in here ever feel God's power? Anybody ever, ever feel God's power? Mm -hmm. You feel God's power? Mm -hmm. When you have felt it, mm -hmm. you've never. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't care who's looking at you. Don't it don't matter. You'll get right on ugly. Yes, sir. You can't shake it off. And you can't turn it off. Till it had ran his course. That's God's power. Jeremiah described it. Fire. Shut up in my bone. But God never comes in unless he takes something out. Come on now. The thing about it is. We're not positioning ourselves in our commission to be in the right gospel so we can receive the right power. Come on, come on. The power that Paul was commissioned to tell us about. Make you look like this to say to me. I don't care how I look to you. Let me, let me walk on, let me walk on out. You gonna help me, your mama. Okay, I got you. I don't care what I look like to you. That's right. When Satan approaches my house, my money, my family, my house, my cars, when Satan approaches me. Yes, sir. This was Satan. Yes, sir. This was Satan. Yes, can I talk to somebody? Yes, sir. I don't care what I'm looking like. Okay. I can be looking like bow leg and loose. That's right. When Satan look at me in the spirit realm, this. That's what he see. And what he see, I can be rightly, no teeth with my mouth. Shut up, I don't care what I look like. Right. But when Satan look at me in the spirit realm, right. this is what he see. Amen. And guess what that does right there? Yep. Ain't messing with him. Right. I'm not going to mess with him. So you get them calls in the wee hours of the night. Pastor, can you pray for me? Right. Oh, they don't want you in the church. But they'll call you in the wee hours of the night. That's right. Pastor, can you, can you help me? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me I'm headed to a revival? Can you tell me and look over in chapter such and such and such and tell me what that means? Uh -huh. Then you're going to go preach to them something you had to get from me. But I'm not worthy enough to be seen in your fraternity. It's okay. Because I'm not trying to impress me. I'm getting what I'm getting from the word of God. Now, 
when you give me Romans 1, when you give me 1 Corinthians, Paul keeps reiterating. Yeah. I'm separated and commissioned yeah. to a certain gospel. So you ain't gonna read Matthew and look like this. No. You ain't gonna read Mark and look like this. You ain't gonna be strong in the Lord if you ain't on the right gospel. Because what most people fail to understand, there are different gospels to different kinds of salvation. Oh, you hear what that boy said? There's different gospels according to different kinds of salvation. Well, tell me. I know you know where Lopes is. Where they building your art at? Who building the place? I see you in here, so you ain't you can't be working on that art. You said mm -hmm. you you going you know it's gonna rain this week. You gonna get on that art when you finish it? That ain't your salvation. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That ain't the right salvation, is it? No. Oh, you ain't in that time. No. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to stop by Moses' And God didn't call us to the burning bush. No. Ephesians 6, 2, 10 say God, with a heavenly calling, placed his hands on us, right. predestined us yes, before the foundation of the world mm -hmm. with every spiritual blessing. He says in 1 2 Peter, he said in everything that we need for life and godliness, is according to the right knowledge. Yep, yep. Is that right? Yes, is that right? It's according to the right knowledge. Yes, so conventional wisdom can't give you the right knowledge no. because if you trust in conventional wisdom, you trust in man. Mm -hmm. That's right. My salvation, I ain't talking about yours. My salvation is too valuable to put my trust in what a man yes, tells me. Yes, I've got to go get it mm -hmm. for myself. Let me tell you what Satan will say when he hit you with that first dog. Satan will come and look at you saying, mm, you've been going to church. You ain't got time to be going to church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> going to church today? Well, no. I ain't going to church today. You ain't studying. Your pastor trying to help you build the, the, the replenishing and the regeneration of your soul by pouring the truth to you, you ain't reading it. You ain't gonna let your pastor preach it to you because Satan just hit you with one of them fiery darts. You didn't have no shield of faith in what to believe in and you didn't have no sword in what to defend yourself with because you've been in the wrong gospel. Oh, no. And you won't tell me. You won't tell me. What God telling you. Soon as you go to talking and tell me where you coming from, I immediately say bing bing. Bing bing. They ain't even in the right gospels. Sip, sip. Can I talk? Can I just talk to somebody? If it took Jesus on the cross to get you to be saved, how you gonna glorify God by telling Satan what Moses and Aaron did, and you ain't even in that era? Somebody gonna talk to me? You ain't even in that era. You know what? You ain't even in the kingdom. You in a mini membered body where you are guaranteed the Holy Spirit. Right. Your commission apostolic apostle is Paul. Right. What Paul got to tell you makes you strong in the Lord right. and in the power of his might. What Paul got 
to tell you or have you spiritually looking like that every time Satan come by your house, get ready to touch your money, want to touch your body, he'll look and see. <laughs> but you ain't believing in you. No. You believing in what he did. Yes. Yes. Abraham didn't believe in himself. No. Because if he did, let me show you what Abraham would have did. Sarah, honey. I think I'm gonna go down here to a Lola bar. Pack up the children. And everything. I think I'm gonna go down here to Lola bar. Find some land and we're gonna leave mother and father. And we're gonna go down there ourselves. That what is that what Abraham did? No. That ain't what Abraham did. No. That ain't what Abraham did. God told Abraham. And Abraham believed God. Amen. You reckon Abraham ever saw God? Mm -mm. No. 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 Abraham didn't never see God. But he believed him. Amen. You ever saw God? No. But you believe him? I got some of the biggest idiots talking about there ain't no God, and I be looking to see if they're breathing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I look and they're breathing, so they got the breath of life inside, and they sitting up there breathing my father's air, like I'm breathing and they got enough nerve. They say, I don't believe in him, so I immediately tell him, okay, don't use his air. I'm sorry, but shut your mouth up. Don't try to use my God like he's some kind of genie in a bottle. Quit sucking his air. What you mean? Quit sucking his air. I see you breathing his breath of life right now. Why are you breathing it if you don't believe in him? Because he the one blue. And bought it up. Is that right? Amen. They look at me and say, I'm going to talk to you right now. Mm. So I know you don't. So, so I'm saying to myself, you want to use my father. But see, tell him I'm going to talk to you. Everything God going to do for us. He started at the end. And went back to the beginning. Started us walking the end. It's finished. The end. Yeah. Already finished. Yeah, already done. Ain't no test. Ain't no trial. Ain't no temptation no, sir. gonna come upon us that God ain't already wrote a way out. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 Not because I put on the armor. <laughs> Can I talk to you, man? <laughs> you know why I look like that, that in the spirit? Because I believe. Because I believe. That's because I believe. God ain't lie to Abraham. I look like that. Because I believe that he, I'm in Abraham's covenant. And if I believe, I go in the Bible to seek mm -hmm. that which he says to me. Because every time I read that which he says to me, every time I read that which is spoken to me, it's like I've been doing push-ups in the morning. Instead of Satan looking for me. What was that, Kelly? The house just cracked. Is it him? Oh, oh. Putting him out of here. Right. <laughs> he, ain't, he ain't messing with my stuff. That's right. See, because he can't mess with what God. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't ready for that. Come on, come on. He can't mess with what God already placed in Christ. Right. Huh? Mm -hmm. God already knew y'all were going to meet before y'all ever saw each other. Right. God already knew what he was going to put together before y'all ever got together. Right. Let me shut up. Shut up, boy. 
Ele não deu ar, se acendeu do ar. Sou eu, Sam! Sou eu, Sam! Sou eu, Sam! Yeah, we've been reading the wrong gospel, yeah. Because what you do is go to church and believe what the pastor said. The Bible says study to show yourself. The Bible told you that everything according to your life and godliness is in your knowledge. How much knowledge you got? How much knowledge you got? How much knowledge you got? And if you ain't got no knowledge, guess what you got to do? Conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom. Let me tell you what conventional wisdom will do. Conventional wisdom will tell you simply this. Conventional wisdom will tell you if you take one step, oh. he'll take two. <laughs> See, we ain't, we ain't Apollos. We ain't Paul. Paul's subject is the grace of God through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But we are not bound to Paul. We are bound to the same one Paul is commissioned right. to. Right. To Jesus is the one that died right. on the cross. Right. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Mm -hmm. Jesus is his might. Mm -hmm. So I look at people you know and they tell me, you know, you're a long ranger, you kind of peculiar, you don't come to the revivals, you don't come to none of that. If you ain't with my God, ain't you with your revival? Amen. And if you don't want Amen. my subject, I don't want you. I'm not going to pretend. That's right. I'm not going to drop nothing right, right. called Travis right. to try to show you no kind of respect. That's right. Because if you don't respect the God in me, That's right. you can't respect me. Being a Christian ain't no second class citizen so people can walk all over top of you. Yeah. Being a Christian is being a soldier. Yeah. Call it like it is and hold it right there. Right well, there. Because regardless of who like it, Ooh, if it's the devil that approaches yes, you, sir. call it like it is yes, and hold it right there. Hold it right there. Amen. Hold it right there. Because the truth will set you free. It'll set you free. Man don't know what to tell you. He didn't engineer, engineer what you looking in the mirror at. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I look in the mirror, and I see this body doing something, and sometimes this leg will do something, and I, I, get, I get up limping, and I look at it and tell it, you better come on and go with me, because I ain't going with you. I got things to do. You better get up and come on here. And so I start preaching the word of God to it. And when I preach the word of God to it, every time it strikes me with another pain, I speak the word of God to it again. And I yes, tell it, pain, I got something yes, to tell you, dirt. Yes, You're not going to outlast what? me standing yes, on what God said. Amen. Amen. Because let me read it one more time. I might have had it wrong. Let me read it one more time. For well, I would not have, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceit. That blindness in part has happened to you until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And they were said, Yes, sir. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sin as concerning the gospel. They are enemies for your sin. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. You say, what did he just read? Here's what I just read. Yesterday, you might have saw me at the traffic light. 
And I might have been saying a few choice words. And here's how you would have acted if you saw me when I was in my mess. Cussing that man out. Love. I'm going home and call yep. Deacon Earl. Tell him how the pastor, we need to call him me. <laughs> I'm not known in heaven by one moment. That's right. I'm not known in heaven by one moment. I'm known in heaven by the process until Jesus pulled that blood off of me. You can talk all you want to talk. I'm going to be up one time and down the next time. But if I do, it ain't me that I'm depending on to bring me through. It's Christ and his righteousness. Too many people trying to depend on what they can do. What can you do? What can you do? Nothing. Can't even change your own personality. He said you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He said, I beseech you, brother, by the mercy of God. Present. Yes. Yes. Come on. Lord, I was at the traffic like I can just like a fool. <laughs> so I'm presenting myself to you. Clean me up, Lord. Clean me up. He said, and sometimes I do that that I should not do. Amen. And then he went on to say, but who can oh, save me? Man, who can save me Come from on. myself? Yes, sir. And he mentioned a name. Jesus. He said, only Jesus. Only, only Jesus. Jesus. only Jesus can save me yep. from myself. Yep. I depend on him. Amen. I ain't got nothing in me to give him. I depend on him because I ain't got nothing in me to give him. He made me beautiful and wonderful. Yeah, dirt. You know, your teeth start falling out. You start getting wrinkled. And, but you got to keep talking to that body. Uh -huh, you got to keep putting that power on that body. But this man right here is a farmer. When I speak to the dirt, when I put a seed in the dirt, it don't just jump up the next day. You got to keep planting them seeds. And when you look back and see them seeds coming up out of the dirt, you know God gave an increase for that which you planted. If you want to do anything, have enough faith to plant them seeds of the truths of the word of God all over that dirt that you made out of this called 53 cent worth of soil. And if you'll keep planting them seeds of expectation and what God said, when God gives the increase, right. you'll feel the difference. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. people. Yes, sir. So I'm going to be me. Because mm -hmm. God ain't going to ask me, what want you Moses, Travis? Right. What want you Ruby? What want you Katie? What want you Kelly? Because you didn't make me them. Yes, right. yes, you me. You gave me a personality that you gave nobody else. Right. Now, my attempt to preach to you today to tell you you a portal of a gospel, mm -hmm. but not every gospel. Mm -hmm. uh, you only want the gospel that'll give you power, and the gospel that'll give you power is to become a messenger of what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm gonna ask the church to I can say this before I get ready to close out and close the prayer. Yeah, I heard about London. I'm sorry for the family. It's in God's hand now. Amen. 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 
should have been in God's hands long before, and I hope it was. I don't know. I can't judge nobody. Amen. I don't know. I don't. I did not hang with them, so I cannot tell you whether they were saints or whether they won't. But I do know God is in charge now. Amen. That's all I got to say. As as far as me, I'm gonna run on. Amen. Amen. See what the end gonna be. I can't copycat and be like other people. I just I don't pretend to be. I'm just gonna be me. What God made me to be, and I got a word from God. When you see me, because I study that book right here all the time. Our hearts and minds great. I'm going to say this. This is a hard time. I want y'all to tell you. I'm going to tell y'all. If you ain't got no power to fight with in this season, mm -hmm. you're going to be bogged down. Amen. You ain't going to stand in this season. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Spirit of the living God, in the scroll, never Jesus, first and foremost, Father, we say thank you for your word, Lord, your rainbow word coming from your body. Yes, yes. Father, that love letter that you gave us, we yes. thank you for the apostolic anointing yes. that you put on power. And that, that John the Revelator with the apocalypse to explain to us what Satan we're going to be doing in the last day. Yes. Father, we know we are in prayer this time. Father, help us, Lord, to draw closer to your son, yes. Jesus, and his yes, power. Lord. In the name of Jesus, continue, Lord, yes. to strengthen us, yes. to walk more and more in the righteousness of your son, Jesus, yes. that you have heavenly called us to. You have ordained us to walk worthy of our yes. calling. You have gifted us. Yes. You have given us the fruit to live. Yes. Now, God, help us to have the mind to simply obey. Yes. In the name of Jesus.